Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the National Veterans Technical Assistance Center's webinar series, um, also known as NVTAC. Today's webinar is Creative Employer Engagement, and we're excited to have three different guest speakers today. Um, we have Carol Salter, the Assistant Vice President of Workforce Solutions from Easter Seals. We have Matt Holland, um, Employment Specialist from HealthNet. And we have Marianne Profeta, the VP of Client Services from Working Wardrobe. So we're excited to have them with us today. Before we, I turn it over to our speakers, I did want to talk about a little bit about logistics. You may have noticed that the, your phone lines are muted and that you cannot talk to the webinar. They will be muted throughout the webinar. The way to ask questions will be through the question box on the webinar itself. On the right-hand side, you'll see a little section that says questions. You can click on that at any time during the webinar and type a question. We will save about 10 minutes at the, till at the end of the webinar to answer as many questions as we can. Um, if there are any questions that we don't get to, we will make sure that our presenters have an opportunity to answer those and we'll make a fact sheet that we'll include with the webinar. The webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on our website um, in the next couple of days. We also um, do a survey of the webinar. As soon as the webinar is over, the survey will pop up on your screen. Um, it's just a very short five or six question survey. Um, there is a chance in that survey as well to ask questions. If you think of something that you want to ask, you can do it there. Um, the webinar um, survey will also come in a reminder email to you tomorrow. So if you don't have time to fill out the survey today, you will get an email tomorrow that will have a link to the recording of the webinar so you can watch it again if you missed part of it or if there's a part that was really helpful and you want to hear it again, you can do that and also take the survey. So with that, we are going to get started with our first speaker. Our first speaker today is Carol Salter. She's the Assistant VP of Workforce Solutions and the National Director of the CSEP program um, for Easter Seals. Um, Carol provides technical assistance and training to uh, Easter Seals workforce solution programs across the country. She develops new relationships with national employers, coordinates employment opportunities for veterans, individuals with disabilities, and other job seekers with barriers to employment at the local level. She provides oversight and, and administration of national level workforce solutions projects including transitional services for at-risk youth, people with disabilities, veterans with and without disabilities, and mature job seekers. She's responsible for all phases of startup, <clears throat> excuse me, including tracking program outcomes, programmatic and financial reports required by the Department of Labor, and other funding sources. Uh, we're thrilled to have Carol with us today. She really is an expert on workforce and employer engagement. So without further ado, Carol. It's, it's all yours. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for being on the webinar today. Um, I know my other two colleagues who are presenting are also well-versed in working with employers. And, and I'm excited to talk to you about the experiences that I've had in the past and what I think are going to be helpful hints for you. Um, next slide. So first of all, since most of you have been working with veterans for quite a while, you understand that, that there are many um, attributes to bringing veterans to the workforce. And we want to uh, be very specific in talking to employers about how we engage with them. Um, we have a, a wonderful uh, video that Easter Seals put together that talks about the fact that uh, that employers want uh, veterans who are who who can work with tight deadlines and, and veterans who can work in stressful atmospheres. And those are the veterans, those are the people that we're working with that have all of those attributes. Um, they have leadership skills. They're flexible to work independently and in teams. And um, they have hands-on experience with technology, globalization. Um, all of these things are things that, that employers are looking for in the workforce today. And we can, all we need to do is to educate them about those transferable skills that the veterans have, have um, worked on and accomplished in their time that they've been in the service. And that doesn't matter whether they're post-9-11 veterans or, 
or veterans of other eras that um, we all work with. Next slide. So um, one of the um, things that I want to talk to you about, um, as uh, hopefully you all know, but in case you don't know, that um, the OFCCP has, since March of 2014, is requiring federal contractors and subcontractors um, to take affirmative action to not only interview, but hire and, um, and retain and um, give uh, preference to veterans who are um, who are in specific categories to get them into the employment. So their annual hiring benchmark is set at seven percent of their total workforce. Um, seven percent of all individuals that they interview and hire need to be veterans. That gives us a real special opportunity to approach those federal contractors and subcontractors to say, I have veterans who are looking for employment. Um, many of these, about 800 of, of these federal contractors uh, and subcontractors are members of an organization called Direct Employers Association. And Direct Employers Association made us a job site that all of you can use. It's um, on easterseal.jobs. You can go to it at any time and put in a, a veteran's MOS, or you can put in your zip code, or the type of job, like um, custodial, or IT, or you can put in the kind of job you want, and the area that you want, and all of those job listings will come up um, for your veterans to look at. Anything that comes up is a job that's with a federal contractor or subcontractor. So you have immediate access to those individuals who are looking to hire veterans. Um, I want to encourage all of you to go ahead and, and when, when you get off the webinar, to look at that site, to look at easterseals.jobs, and utilize that. It's free for anybody who wants to use that. Um, and we're, we're really excited about this. We also have connections with those veterans so, uh, or, or those organizations, those, those businesses that want to hire these veterans. So very often when your veterans do put in their applications, you can contact um, Easter Seals. Actually, you can contact me and say, my veteran applied for this job, and I can let that employer know that there is a, an application in their pile of applications that have come through. There's an application uh, for somebody who has applied for your job who is a veteran and who has support services. And hopefully that will pull that uh, resume out of that pile into the uh, employer's hands. Next slide. One of the other um, things that I want you to be aware of is that the Veterans Opportunity to Work, the VOW Act, has uh, tax credits as an incentive to employers who want to hire unemployed veterans. And these tax credits can, uh, as you can see, they're quite substantial, $2,400 for um, an employer who hires a veteran who's been employed four weeks, and it's actually up to $5,600 if, if a veteran's been unemployed longer than six months. And many, many of the veterans that you are working with uh, would qualify for this uh, tax incentive. Next slide, there's even a, a higher uh, tax incentive for a veteran who has a service-connected disability. And the work opportunity tax credit can go up to $9,600 for those firms um, who elect to hire somebody who's been unemployed uh, six months or longer if they hire a veteran with a service-connected disability. Very often, the employers that we're working with um, are very interested in the um, in these tax credits, and they have been reauthorized by the federal government. So you should be able to use those when you're working. I, I have to tell you that uh, there are some large employers who utilize this, but many of the medium and smaller employers are really eager to use this. Um, I'll give an example. Um, CVS Pharmacy is uh, they love these tax incentives because um, each one of their managers at the local level if they get a tax incentive like this, it's considered over and above the, the money that that particular store is making. 
and the uh, manager of that store gets paid an, an extra um, incentive if they bring in tax incentives at the end of every month. So they, they are really excited about uh, having this opportunity to utilize tax credits. You will run into some employers who just say, you know what, I don't want to be bothered. But um, those, I haven't found a whole lot of those. Next slide. So we want to talk to you today, I want to talk to you today about um, talking to employers about um, getting the idea of working with a veteran. And we can do this through mentorship, through job shadowing. Um, job shadowing is is when you might go to an employer and say, you know, my veteran would uh, love to do this kind of work and he thinks that he has the skills, but, but maybe he can come out, um, he or she can come out and watch one of your employees and talk to one of your employees about going through the, um, the, the watching them throughout the day to see exactly what kind of skills they need and what kind of atmosphere would they be working in. And uh, that then that employee can talk to the um, job seeker about how did I get here and what kinds of educational background or experiential background did I need and what, what can you do to transfer your skills that you learned in the military over to what we're looking for in, in this civilian position. Um, also, apprenticeships are really big right now. The Department of Labor is really pushing apprenticeship programs. Now, um, I know that most of you know that there are the typical apprenticeship programs like electricians, bricklayers, um, pipe fitters, things like that. But there are also apprenticeships for cooking, for um, home health care, for babysitting or, or child, not babysitting, but child care assistance. There's a lot of different apprenticeship programs that where um, a person will do both the educational side and the work-based learning, and those apprenticeship programs um, generally pay while they're going through the apprenticeship programs. Um, the Department of Labor has a lot of information about apprenticeship programs and a directory for apprenticeship programs in your area. Um, we want to talk to employers about trading education for in-field experience. Those employers who say you must have a bachelor's degree or master's degree, um, many of the veterans that we're working with have more experience than somebody coming out of college who has those degrees. They have more hands-on experience, and so we want to talk to the employer about trading out um, the, the hours that would normally be required to get a bachelor's degree to say this person has um, this field experience, and so would you consider um, substituting their experience for the degree? Next slide. One of the most important things, I think, is getting the veteran to understand the culture of the company. Um, what, what I do when I'm working with a veteran is, is have them do research on the company. Do, you know, go to their website. Uh, since veterans are so used to hierarchical um, organizational structure, I think that we need to help them understand the hierarchy within certain agencies. Look for those um, the um, org charts of the agency and learn to to um, work through your supervisor and up through the director. Um, understand the goals of the company. When when they're in the military, they're given a goal and and understand how that job fits into that mission. Um, find out what the mission of the agency is. What, is. what is their end result that they want to get to? And when you're working with the employer, um, check in with your veteran several times um, dur during your retention services. And um, if needed, teach the veteran how to ask for job accommodations. Um, if, Sometimes the employers are leery of, you know, that the veteran that they're coming, that's coming into them might have um, post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injuries because of all of the um, information that they've received through the media that they think that every veteran that's coming back from um, Iraq and Afghanistan um, have some kind of, of mental disability um, or, or um, problems that, that they are afraid to hire them into the workplace where 
Um, they may just need a, a quiet workspace or make sure that the, their desk, um, their, their back is against the wall so that they can see people approaching the door. There may be uh, many, many uh, um, accommodations that can be low or no cost that the employers can utilize. And it's just information. And the veterans need to let them know, hey, this would make my work environment um, more uh, convenient to me, to me. We had um, one person that we hired at East Seals who uh, not take the, 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 uh, the light system that we had there. And so we had to bring a lamp in for her. And that's all she needed as an accommodation. But she was, you know, came and said, you know, it's the, the fluorescent light bothers my eyes and I can actually hear the buzzing from the lights. So this would help me do my job if we could turn those lights off and then just have a lamp here that, that I could utilize in my office space. So um, next slide, please. One of the things I really want to impress on you is that we don't want to rely a lot on um, job boards. We want to do in-person networking. When I go out and do site visits, if, if my job developer or a business person is sitting at their desk looking online at job boards or um, I, I don't think that they're doing a great job. Not I think that they need to be out in the community. They need to be out building relationships and talking to those um, the, the employers that are out there. Uh, vocational and technical colleges have boards of directors that we can get on um, and we can be a vet rep on those boards of directors. Um, when I was working with uh, Machinist Union and I worked with uh, people who, were, who had disabilities who were trying to get into jobs and I went to the board of um, directors for the, for the um, Seattle Community Colleges and I entered, I, I became one of the board members as a union representative even though I had my, my disability hat and my veteran hat on. Um, so, you know, any way that you can get into the system to help them understand how to work better with veterans um, or with veterans with disabilities, we want to get in there. Um, go to Chamber of Commerce. You should be a member of Chamber of Commerce at, the, at your local level. They have to after hour events. They have other events where you can let them, let the other members know what you're doing and the, the people that you're working with and that they're looking for jobs. Um, Rotary clubs, Kiwanis clubs, things like that. Become involved in your community. Um, one of my most favorite ways to work with employers is doing informational interviews. And if you'll go to the next slide, Cindy, um, I want to talk to you about these informational interviews. There are five hierarchies of how employers hire uh, people, any individual in their company. First of all, employers will hire people they know. So if I have a job opening and I know that one of you are, and I know one of you, and I think that you would fit very well into the job opening that I have, I'm going to call you up and say, listen, I have an opportunity at my agency. I'll, I'll steal you from your agency if I need to, if I think that that's going to help me have a better program by hiring you. So I will hire somebody that I know before I hire anybody else. Um, I, you know, I know their personality and I'm comfortable with them. I know that they're going to be an excellent employee. If I can't find somebody I know, I'll hire somebody that I've met before. Um, is somebody who might have applied for a position with me that I didn't, that, that I, I was very impressed with, but it didn't quite meet the needs for that particular position that I'm hiring for. I'll go back to them. I'll hold on to their resume and I'll go back to them and say, you know what, it didn't work out for this other position, but I was really impressed with you and I have a position that I think that you would fit into very well. So will you come back and interview for that position? The third way on this um, hierarchy is that people, employers will hire people that their employees know. I know that um, my son-in-law works for an organization that subcontracts with Microsoft and for every person that he refers to a job opening, if they get hired, he gets a $1,500 bonus. Uh, that's because his employer trusts his judgment 
in who he thinks would make a good employee. And there's a lot of agencies that will do that. The fourth level is employers will hire people from referring agencies. So that's like HBRP grants, SSBF grants, um, agencies like Easter Seals, or even staffing agencies. We're number four down on this list. And so we, we have a struggle to get to those top three. Um, and then the last way employers hire people is they'll advertise in newspaper, on social media, on LinkedIn, um, signs in their windows as you're walking down the street. That is the last way that employers actually want to hire people because these are an unknown quantity. Um, you know, they're just people who have been walking in uh, off the street or, you know, that they don't have a... Uh, they, they don't have any first-hand knowledge or even second-hand knowledge on how well these people will work in their agencies. Next slide. So if we do ourselves informational interviews and get the people that we're working with to do informational interviews, then what that's going to do is it's going to put us in one of the, um, the top two or three hierarchies. It's, we're going to be talking to employers and they will have met us and they will have met the individuals that are looking for jobs. So when we're, we, I send people out to do informational interviews or I do informational interviews, these are the goals that I have here um, to explore the type of careers that are in there. And I'll, I'll tell you a real quick story. Um, I was uh, on my way to work. I always passed this one place. Um, it looked like a big warehouse, and it, it was it was called um, Sign Keepers. And I thought, well, what do they do in this place? It, it just the the name of the agency or the company didn't make any sense to me. So I went in, and I stopped in there one day, cold calling, and said, um, one of these days, could I, I? I work with people who are looking for jobs. So one of these days, if the HR director's in. I would like to maybe get a tour through your facility and see what you do. And so um, the the receptionist said, "Well, she's here today. Let me go talk to her." So I got a, I got a tour, and I found out that um, they make all of these little plaques that are on like your your um, Asus tablet or your Dell computer or the back of the metal plates on the back of your microwave or refrigerator. Um, and so the jobs that they had, they had sales screeners, they had designers, they had quality control people, they had um, stalkers, they had forklift drivers, they had people who packaged in their departments. I, it, my eyes just opened up to all these different kinds of jobs that I got to actually see when I was working, walking through the, um, the warehouse. And uh, I found out, I asked them, well, what's your highest turnover position? Um, what, do you, what do your employees need to do this position? What do they need to do that position? And that HR director was very impressed with um, that, that now I knew firsthand what kinds of jobs that they were looking for. And so about, um, I just gave her my business card, and about a month later, she called me up and said, we have a, a position open in our warehouse, um, and we need a, a picker, somebody who picks the, as the job orders comes through, somebody who, who packs up the material, and we need a forklift driver. Do you have anybody that I can fill um, that position with? So um, we, I, I have a list of questions. If you send somebody out to do an informational interview, um, a, a list of questions that, that the veterans can ask the employers to get more information, to get a deeper dive into the kinds of positions that they're looking for and the kinds of positions that employers have open that I will give to Cindy and she can send out to all of you. Um, the next slide. Um, Oh, that's, that's for somebody else. So um, that's um, the, the next speaker. I'll let Cindy introduce them, but I am really um, glad to be talking to you today. If you have any kind of takeaway from me today, it's on the informational interviews. I want you to be ready to go out there and knock on doors and say, what do you do here? Um, you, as the job uh, developer, as well as your job seekers. Both of you can go out and work with employers in this way. I've found it to get many jobs um, for the people that I've worked with in the past. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Carol. Um, Carol, we'll be sticking around, so if you have questions, we will have a question period towards the end of the webinar. Um, our next speaker is Matt Holland. Um, he has been in the role of the employer liaison, employer liaison at HealthNet for four years. I mean, he has 12 years' experience managing hotel properties with white lodging services and um, Starwood Hotels. He's an active member of the Indianapolis Continuum of Care, advocating for homeless and formerly homeless clients in the Indi Indianapolis metro area. He also serves as, as a committee chair for one of the Continuum of Care work groups, in addition to serving for the past three years on the local Continuum of Care governing board. So with that, Matt, take it away. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I'm going to you're going to notice some trends from what Carol just covered. I'm going to go into a little bit deeper dive on some of the strategies that we use when we engage with employers, and that's 90% of my job. The unfortunate part is that I only have 10 to really engage with the veterans that are searching for employment, and that's part of the piece that I really enjoy the most. But um, it's a great 10% to have, so I won't deny that. Um, really, I don't have a lot of slides. Uh, but I want to kind of talk a little bit about what job development as we see it is and what it's really not. So it's not just getting on the distribution list for openings that employers have. That's maybe a piece of it to get that information to the rest of your team. Um, and it's not just checking in or following up. Um, that sounds like you're selling something, there's some kind of a fee. Um, and in my experience making mistakes doing this job, I found out that closes more doors than really opens them. So what we try to really do is understand what each employer, each business, what some of their challenges are, even if it's outside of the hiring and retention um, piece. You know, we can be productive and add value, which is what we want to do for every time I go out to engage with an employer, whether it's an existing relationship or something that I'm working on that's a new uh, contact, I want to be giving some kind of value back um, to that contact person. So that could be providing industry info. They may even have it already, but I want to be bringing that to them. You know, even this may be what your competitors are doing. Are you doing this? And if not, is it worth looking at? You know, is this the next big trend that's coming up in your industry? Um, certainly want to be educating on local labor trends. Um, sometimes they're not as plugged into those numbers as I expect them to be, and they, they see their ups and their downs in terms of volume of candidates, but they may not understand why that is. Um, and then to really focus in on that veteran piece, um, as Carol was stating, there's so many different benefits and skills um, that a veteran or, um, you know, sometimes we have a dual veteran family that we're assisting. You, a, a normal um, person in the public um, that's not a veteran, hasn't been engaged with the military, just doesn't have those skills. Um, and sometimes we do have to awaken those skills within our, our veterans, but um, they are absolutely mission focused and mission driven. So what we really try to do is understand what that organization's mission is on the front side, communicate that to our employment specialists, and then make sure that each job seeker, each candidate, make sure that they find a mission with whatever company they decide to move forward with that really connects with them. All of us on this call are not focused on you know, hey, 10 bucks to work at McDonald's or whatever to get some income. That's obviously important um, to get income in our candidates' pockets, um, but really where we're going to get the biggest bang for our buck and hopefully not see those participants again is because they found a career they really connect with. And they can take that and they see promotion potential and it awakens that inner drive that they have. Um, some other things that we really try to do is um, we want them to refer us to other hiring managers, other organizations that may have not connected with community organizations before. Um, and sometimes that's really just understanding the piece of, you know, if you have engaged with community organizations in the past, what have been some of the challenges? What have been some of the successes? 
and really get down to what does that successful relationship and partnership look like for that particular business? What, what is their definition of success? Um, if we're reaching our definition of success but not providing theirs, we're not adding the complete value that we need to be adding. Um, so we really want them to to connect with what we're doing, um, which is, again, at a basic level, solving challenges that they have. Um, it's kind of interesting because I have two different customer bases. One is the businesses, and then one is my veterans that are searching for employment. Um, and I go into every meeting acknowledging that and saying, listen, if I'm not responsive, that's a problem. So whether you need to continue to engage me or go above me, you can do whatever you need to. Um, that's one of the big things I hear here locally is, well, we've tried to reach out to certain organizations, but we just don't hear anything back, and there's no, seems to be not very much urgency. Um, so that's something that costs us nothing. That's just us being adaptive and, re and proactive with our employers and making sure that we're connecting with them when they need us to, to connect in. Um, we also, you know, going back to the solving challenges that are not hiring-based, um, we, we recently had an employer said, hey, our morning huddle is just not effective. It's, our people are not buying into what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. We know they still really enjoy working here, but this piece could be so much more powerful. So in that case, all we did was brainstorm some ideas with them. Here's what we do. Here's what we've done at other, you know, other staff members of ours have done this at other places. We simply came up with some other options that they could try. We had, we had kind of a session to run through that, what that huddle might look like before they actually rolled it out. Um, and then it was successful, and they found out that, you know, their employees still were buying into what they were doing. They were just confused on the message. So that had nothing to do with any of our candidates. That had nothing to do with the hiring piece um, or even the coaching piece. That was simply we need this meeting to be more effective every day so that our team can start off on the right foot. So that's another place where you can add value as you're developing those relationships with your businesses. Um, and then we really look for, we want to partner. We want our businesses to be as engaged as they can be or as they feel the need to be. Um, so that could be everything from, you know, once we have that relationship built, it might include um, clothing drives for interview clothing. Uh, we work with a lot of professional businesses and people update their wardrobes and don't necessarily know what to do with it besides maybe going to a Goodwill. But if they knew that, hey, this is going to go to somebody who doesn't have interview clothing, who's homeless, or working their way through being homeless, they're going to present better, their self-confidence is going to like dramatically increase, they may be willing to do a clothing drive or a food drive um, and really connect with that social responsibility piece that they may have as a corporation. Um, we also want to do co-sponsored events. So we've had we've had uh, recently a women's brazier day where we had 150 to 200 women from the women's shelters locally came and got properly fitted for a brazier. They got makeup, they had massages. It was just a really nice day of pampering for them. And we had several organizations that helped in one way or another be a part of that. That's great PR for that particular business. It's also great PR for your program. So um, really thinking creatively and how can we make this more than just uh, I'm here to fill your job racks. I'm here to, to really expand the culture of your business. Uh, we also definitely do the job shadowing and the tours with our folks and our businesses. Um, that's something that you can't buy with, you know, it's, it's worth so much to be right in that situation and see that job going. Um, and then for us, we have outreach um, opportunities to engage with folks that are on the street. So. We even have businesses that refer back to us and say, one of our employees is experiencing homelessness. They recently were evicted. They don't know what to do, where to go. 
we're able to click in very easily, provide that expertise, and assist that business to do the right thing for their for their employees. Um, if you go, Cindy, to the first slide, you'll see just some ideas. So we try to do some creative things just to keep our partners kind of engaged, have some fun, use the creative side of our brain. So you'll see a picture of a, a little s'more kit and it says, we need s'more staff like you. So we do that internally, but we also did that with our employers. We need some more employers like you. We need some more partners like you. It's silly. It doesn't take a lot of time. We did use the creative part of our brain, but really they don't know. We just went on Pinterest and Google Googled that, figured it out, went and did it in an afternoon, and we had so much fun and it was so much value that cost absolutely nothing. So you'll see another one there that says, thanks for a lot for all you do. Uh, actually, a latte. I don't know anybody that wouldn't just get a kick out of that. Um, and you're not looking for long-term enhancements from this. You just want to keep them on your mind and say, oh, you know, the last time Matt came in here, he had a really neat little thing that he did for us. Maybe we can steal that and use that for our employees because that's really kind of a neat thing. So the sources for kind of where to find some of those either supplies or ideas are kind of listed there. Um, that's not going to be a big surprise probably to most of you where those come from. Um, and then if you go to the last slide, we also do an employer engagement event. Um, and that's really to get our, our new partners and some of our existing partners in the same room so that we can educate the new partners on how our program works, what our HVRP program can assist our, our candidates with, and kind of gives them an idea of the support that is around our veterans as they're interviewing and, and working on the job. Um, so we have a we had a place setting, we have an agenda, we have a copy of our slides which are attached to this webinar for everybody to look at if you're interested. Um, we provide all that information to um, everyone that attends and then we have our whole staff is there to meet them and really engage so that if they say, hey, Kevin from HIP just contacted me about somebody that applied, they know who Kevin from HIP is. They have that relationship built already, they've met and they have a better idea of who's sending that referral. Because ideally, I'm out continuing to build new relationships, and then the, the connection piece between our specialists and that employer um, can really continue to be enhanced. Um, we do a survey at the end asking you for feedback. What did you like? What do you want to, what should we change? What didn't we cover that maybe we should have covered? Um, and then that's really where we kick off, hey, if you want to be part of our mock interview process, we'd love to have you. Here's when it is. You can get a sneak peek at the talent before they even apply. Um, just to really foster, the more we have them engaged and able to visualize what we're doing, the better they, and they can anticipate what kind of talent they're going to be receiving as we have folks apply. Um, and then we do have the retention piece where we can job coach, we can help them if they're having issues meeting their, you know, number of picks or they're not hitting all the customer service points they need to, we can go and do some on-the-job coaching and co-own that, that responsibility for honing that employee so it doesn't just fall on the business. We, we take equal ownership of it. Um, that's really all I wanted to cover. Um, it's really, I think it's the most fun part, personally. Um, I love knowing the veterans that I'm working with, but I also love being able to educate them on the personalities of who they're going to be talking to as they interview. I think it helps eliminate a little bit of the anxiety for them. Thank you so much, Matt. We appreciate that. Um, as Matt mentioned, if you go to the handout section, the presentation that he does for employers is actually shared there. So. Feel free to download that um, and use it as a basis for things that you might do in your own employer engagement efforts. Um, our next speaker is Marianne Profeta. She's the Vice President of the Career Success Institute and the VetNet program at Working Wardrobes, which is an independent nonprofit organization that empowers men, women, veterans, and young adults 
to re-enter the workforce and achieve success. Marianne oversees all career development, training, and special programming for clients, including veterans and their families. She manages a team of 10 staff members and also recruits and trains a team of professional HR and organizational development coaches who volunteer their time. These vital life-changing services are made available to thousands of clients each year. Before joining Working Wardrobes, Marianne was the Assistant Director of the Career Center at the University of California, Irvine for nine years, and she also worked in human resources um, and as a recruiter for a Fortune 100 company. So she does have the employer side of this as well. So with that, uh, Marianne. Thank you, Cindy. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone this afternoon. Um, I do, yeah, thank you. If you can go to the next slide, please. You already um, stated our mission. It's very important for us with a name like Working Wardrobes that we explain a little bit of our background. Um, our number one service, contrary to what is in our name, really is uh, employment and career development services. We do, of course, supply that professional wardrobe, um, but that's the final piece in the puzzle. And that, that really is the final touch for all of our clients. Um, we um, launched our VetNet program back in 2012, and we were the first in Orange County to receive the HBRP grant. And that's been a big focus of ours, and that really put us on the map as far as serving veterans goes. Um, we've served over 1,200 in the last four years, and we've um, been able to maintain a between 70 and 84 percent placement rate, depending on the program. Um, Orange County is really unique in that we are not specifically one city. Um, we're in between, we're sandwiched in between Los Angeles and San Diego, and so um, we, ha we have a certain identity. Um, please don't associate us with that. Um, infamous TV show, but um, we do have a real homeless problem, and we're made up of the 34 cities, each with their own issues. Uh, so we reach out, we have a, um, we have a, a big net to cast, really, um, for our veterans when we do outreach. Um, so what I want to focus on today really are just these three things um, that you see on your screen for best practices really leveraging your current relationships with the employers that you already have, um, using the power of volunteerism. I agree with the uh, two previous, my, my two previous colleagues on everything that they, that they said. Um, so I won't go into a lot of detail on those issues, but I think the unique thing that we bring really is volunteerism um, and also identifying sustainable employment opportunities. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, corporate sponsor, uh, partnerships. A lot of you already have corporate partnerships, um, probably through your development department. This is a great opportunity for you to collaborate with your fellow department um, and take advantage of those partnerships that they already have and work together uh, so that you can um, kind of cement those relationships. Um, a lot of what we hear today, which was already mentioned by um, Matt, is our corporate social responsibility initiatives that so many companies have. You can really step in and talk to these companies about their initiatives and say, I have a perfect solution for you. And that would be to work with us um, to not only place our, our clients into um, opportunities with your company, but also to have them fulfill that need for corporate social responsibility. Um, some of the things that we do are uh, tours of our facility. We have specific CSR days where a volunteer group from a local company will come in and spend either half a day or the full day with us. They tag and sort clothes in our donation center, or they'll do practice interviews with our clients. And this gives them the opportunity to actually be on site and see the types of services that we're providing um, to our clients. We also have client gatherings. So we'll have an alumni barbecue or some kind of a workshop for those that may be a little underemployed, that are looking for new opportunities. And then we'll invite our employers in to mingle with our clients. It's a perfect opportunity for them, no, no real um, pressure on either side. It's not a job interview, but it's a really good opportunity for that first step. Um, I love that Carol talked a lot about um, informational interviews. 
this is the perfect opportunity for that first meeting with the potential employer, and then you're more comfortable asking for that informational interview. So this kind of sets the stage. And when you have corporate partnerships, it also provides you with that opportunity to give them a bonus. So you could say, well, if you're our corporate partner, then you have first pick of our candidates, because they're actually interacting with them throughout the entire process. OK, next slide, please. So leveraging current relationships. Um, I think it's really important to develop relationships with all types of companies. But you really want to be realistic with those that you choose to target. So as an example here in Orange County, we have mainly mid-sized companies. Um, we don't have the really big companies um, headquartered here. They're either in LA or San Diego or throughout the country. Um, but what we do have are companies like Google and Toyota that have their smaller operations here in Orange County. So they have more of a satellite office. And these are really good opportunities to bring in those local employers into our organization and interact with us. Um, for an example, we have Activision. Uh, uh, have, they have a smaller division called Blizzard. And they're right here in um, the same city that we're in, in Irvine. And we have them coming in in a couple weeks to actually paint a mural on our wall. So they're fulfilling their need for corporate social responsibility. They're going to come in and paint and spend the day with us. And then we have a graduation ceremony immediately following, which they'll be invited to stay for. And they will, our, our veterans will be able to know on the map that they paint on the floor where they're from or where they were stationed. So we have a US map and a world map that will be painted. So it's a win-win for engaging these employers. They get to see what we're about, and then they get to meet our, our, our clients on a less formal basis. So that's what our graduation ceremonies are all about. OK, the next slide that I really want to talk about um, is the power of volunteerism. So we're definitely a volunteer-driven organization. Um, we have over 4,000 volunteers a year. And they're with us every day. Uh, we couldn't survive without our volunteers. In fact, it's the key um, to our success in, that, in the way that we utilize them. Uh, we, have opportunities for volunteers in all areas of our business. Um, we have social enterprise stores that we run. We have a donation center. Uh, we use our volunteers as facilitators for our workshops and as coaches and mentors um, for our clients as well. And we use skilled-based volunteers um, for roles such as um, HR, accounting, and recruiting. So um, one of the examples that I'd like to give is um, the partnership that we have with 1OC. So 1OC is a, a volunteer organization here in Orange County. And they, they work directly with companies. And they identify the need for different volunteers. And that is how we um, connected with Activision, um, also with Western Digital, with Microsoft. Some, so from very large companies that can come in and volunteer with us. And then that leads to the next step of that relationship. We also encourage our candidates to volunteer. And they have opportunities with our partner agencies, which can also lead to job placement. So we have a great relationship with Goodwill of Orange County. And they do a lot of hiring. Um, they're a much larger, larger organization than we are. And so we're able to have our candidates go volunteer for a while with Goodwill leading to some great employment opportunities with that big, very big um, organization. And by doing um, what we do with our volunteers, it allows us um, a constant flow of, of job opportunities for um, the clients that we have to place. So if we look at the next slide, <clears throat> talking about our local employers, um, definitely don't overlook the mom and pop employers. Um, it's, it's really important to not only look at those large companies with the big names, but also the smaller ones. Um, we are, um, our, our number one industry here in Orange County is entertainment and hospitality. And we have a lot of smaller employers um, with catering businesses, 
um, smaller entertainment. We're just on the outskirts of LA here. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for those smaller companies. We go out and we engage them. We invite them in for tours. We visit. We do informational interviews with them, find out what they're about. And it really provides them with an opportunity to get to know us as well as the clients that we're trying to place. And I'd like to um, wrap it up with uh, some success stories that we've had with some companies. So we all know Boeing, very large company. Um, they hire a lot of veterans. And we have a great relationship with them. They fund us. Uh, they provide a lot of volunteer teams. In fact, just this morning, we cemented a great relationship with them. For the first time, their volunteers are going to come in and actually cook for our veterans. We're going to have a holiday turkey dinner right here on site. And that's really exciting. Um, and they're very excited about doing that. PIMCO is more of a mid-sized regional company. It's a financial management company. Um, they're very interested. They have a very huge veterans hiring initiative throughout um, California. They host our events. They're um, a very good partner with us. And um, they provide through their, um, they have an employee group of veterans. And they volunteer with us to do practice interviews as well as to host a lot of our events on site. Um, they have a beautiful facility here in Orange County. And then my final example is a very small family-owned mom and pop business called Trails End Cycling Center. They're about a block away from us physically. <clears throat> and what they do is, you know, they can't fund us. They can't provide any corporate um, sponsorships in the amount, you know, of five or ten thousand dollars. But what they do is they take in donation bikes for us. So when a customer comes into their shop and wants to buy a new bike, they offer to take their old one in if, they'll, if the customer will donate it. And they will completely refurbish that bike. They'll put on new tires, um, anything that needs to be done to the bike to get it back up and running 100%. And then they donate it. And they come to one of our graduations. And they present it to a veteran um, that is in need of transportation. So all companies on all levels have something to offer um, and great opportunities for our veterans. So these are just some of the examples that we have of our great partnerships. So that, Thank you that so much, Marian. Sure. I appreciate uh, all three of our speakers. We do have a few questions. If other folks have questions, I encourage you to um, go ahead and type them into that question box. We'll get to as many as we can. Um, the first question, and any of the three of you um, can answer this one is we have someone who's asking a question about um, how to help veterans who have felony convictions. Um, they are having a lot of struggles finding employers who are willing to, willing to hire those veterans. So I'm curious if any of you have suggestions for how they can engage employers who might be willing to hire a veteran with a criminal history. This is Marianne. I can answer that. Um, from our perspective, we, we definitely, that's a big part of our population that we serve, um, veteran and civilian. And we do have estab very established relationships with employers that we know will hire, that will give um, someone with a background um, a, a, a chance to interact. And a lot of times that starts with, with them volunteering in the organization. Um, we do have a lot of, um, a lot of employers, such as hospitality, uh, grocery stores, that a lot of them will hire. And so we engage them coming in. Um, someone mentioned CVS earlier. CVS will also give opportunities to people with backgrounds um, in certain positions. So it's just really identifying those employers that are willing to give our clients that second chance. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, Carol or Matt, do either of you have any other ideas? I would piggy bank real quick. I think Marianne hit that right on the head of the nail. Um, I will say also, she was talking about the smaller businesses, the mom and pop shops, the family owned places. They typically don't have the resources maybe to do background checks. So if you're, you know, up front with them when your business development rep is out there talking to them and then um, your veteran is well coached, a lot of times it just shows the ability to move through a challenging situation 
and persevere. I don't think that's really a shock to most businesses that people with backgrounds are looking to work. It shows that they're making a different choice. And then I would also say that that volunteer piece is really big for that particular um, cha or barrier or challenges they're working through that too. Because if they can show that they're volunteering and they're doing some really positive things, that shows a conscious choice to you know do something else because um, they don't they don't carry that bad choice around with them necessarily, but they're aware of, you know, I don't want to go back and, and do that again. I want to make sure that I'm moving the right direction. And even though I own that particular mistake, I want to learn from it. Great. Thank you. This is Carol. Yeah, this is Carol. And one of the best things that I've seen is if you get um, them to actually do like a live resume, um, schedule them to have a talk in front of a Kiwanis club or um, a, a Rotary club to get up there and tell a little bit of their story and be honest with their story um, the, about, you know, this, this is where I came from, but these are the skills I have and this is how I've turned my life around and this is the type of job I'm looking for. So, so that's one way is to get them in front of employers to, as a group to do that, and then no one employer is feeling any kind of pressure or anything. Um, the other is, um, again, the informational interview to get them to introduce themselves and, and get the employer to know them. But um, be, be upfront about it. Uh, one of the employees that I hired uh, said at when, when she was scheduled, I was scheduling an interview with her, she asked, um, do you, uh, would you consider hiring somebody who has, um, a um, has a federal record and um, a felony record, and you know I told her as long as you're um, honest on your application and that you know that you have this, and as long as it's not the type of thing that would interfere with the type of work that you're hiring, uh, of course uh, you know we would consider you because we're looking for a skilled person, and um, she's she's been an awesome employee ever since. Um, we, I, I would also say, at Easter Fields, we've we've got the uh, the benefit of having many affiliates across the United States who have workforce development programs. And one of the things we did is um, sent an email out and said, um, "Let us know who has hired a person who has been incarcerated, somebody who's justice involved." Um, who, what employers have you been successful working with? And then what we did is we distributed that because most of them or many of them were national level employers. Um, so if, if you have a network that you're working with, ask your network who um, in your uh, circle has hired a veteran, um, or not necessarily a veteran, a person who has um, a justice involved background and then utilize those contacts. Great, thank you all. That's a challenge that ha that a lot of our HPRPs, I think, face. So um, appreciate hearing uh, lots of great ideas from all three of you. We had another question about um, someone who does a lot of work in college towns and is finding that their um, veterans who they're trying to place are competing against, in many cases, recent college graduates who have a degree um, who are just employers are hiring those folks over the veterans and they're looking for some ex some advice or some suggestions about how they can help their veterans compete with this crop of fresh graduates that is kind of prolific in their area. This is Carol again. Um, I, again, I would be real upfront in working with the employers and letting them know how much experience that these people have compared to people who are um, fresh out of college. Um, it, it is a, in, in this day and age when people are lo looking for bachelors and masters and PhDs for certain positions, um, we really have to be advocates for the people who have transferable skills and for people who've um, proven through their service that they are 
prompt, um, you know, they're on time, they can work independently, they can work as a team member, they already have those what we call soft skills. Generally, in, in, we call them soft skills. I think they're actually hard skills because they're harder for people to learn. A lot of people, a lot of the young people, and don't mean to offend anybody if any of you are young, but a lot of young people, you know, they haven't learned all of those skills that that um, other individuals have learned out um, who've, who've actually been on the ground doing the work. So I think just that communication with the employer and selling the transferable skills that the veteran has already learned um, is, and their willingness to continue learning or to go back to college or whatever um, to get the degree, but uh, we have to get them a foot up. Great, Carol. Thank you so much. I am just noticing the time. It is um, 3.01, so we're one minute late um, on our webinar. So we will um, stop now. If there are any questions that weren't answered, we will make sure that we I forward them on to our speakers and get their input. Um, you can see on your screen now the contact information for each of our speakers. Um, I'd like to thank Carol, Matt, and Marianne for participating today and sharing their expertise and their ideas and strategies. We really do appreciate it. Um, please make sure um, to fill out the survey for the webinar, either at the conclusion of this or when it comes in the email. You'll also be able to download, a, see an entire recording of the webinar or download the PowerPoint slides. Those will be up shortly, as well as the handout that Matt mentioned of the presentation that he does with his employers. So again, thank you to our speakers, and have a great day, everyone.